Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, waking up for you very nice and early and safe and safu Sunday morning over here from Helsinki, feeling very nice and bright and sunny day as we have not seen in a very long time. So as always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest Sundays. Yes, Sunday. Yes, it's Goat Jesus Sunday. Pray to your Lord and Savior, Goat Jesus, or whatever denomination that you desire. Anyways, getting a live stream right here, right now as uh, Bitcoin actually having a little bit of a move in the overnight session, which has been the story for me for the last uh, month or so, all moves happening in the overnight session for me anyways as you can see the bigger range still not broken the 377 uh, exponential to the upside still governing the 200 exponential to the downside still untested actually we're gonna have to really zoom in on this guy to get a better read on the lower time frames which we've been covering for the last uh, of uh, for the last couple days ever since we've kind of gotten to this more tightened range but going on into the four hour total time frame right over here we can see that Bitcoin is forming actually an ascending triangle right now now we did get the test yesterday that we that uh, that we were looking for but remember when I said this was just going to be a scalp right at this 5250-ish range right over here and straight down to test the bottom side of the range, finding support right alongside this uh, th this rising trend line, essentially making and forming out an ascending triangle, which is typically, typically a bullish tree resolve pattern. Not always, though. I've seen every pattern break out every goddamn which way. That's why I only care about supporting resistance, and right now we are grinding the resistance once again. If this area can be broken, there is a measure move to be made on this baby, and I'll do a very poor and, uh, and uh, 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 a very poor one right now, and that'd be pointing all the way towards, oh my god, God, is that our next target at 5,600? Yes, it is, of course. You know, sometimes technical analysis fucking works. Um, <clears throat> of course, so I need to see this area broken first and foremost. So I need to see uh, about a four-hour deal to close and above that 5,250-ish uh, area. And then I'd be happy to call uh, a nice move up in this next zone, which is also going to agree with the volume profile. Un un you know, understand that we are kind of in a very low volume area overall in comparison to the bigger picture. But even within this very low volume area there we are kind of stuck on a you know on 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 what would be a higher relative value node right over here and after this area is broken there is nothing stopping from uh, about 5600 5700 ish area this next sort of blocky territory that i have marked up marked off overhead so right here right now of course does that mean that i am just blindly getting long nope i mean why well, i'm kind of holding some bitcoin i suppose so that I, I guess that counts in a way but more importantly speaking i uh, need to see this area broken first and foremost and because it is a weekend i'm not really too i'm not really too gung-ho about getting into positions in fact I, I try to avoid trading on the weekends uh looking at our oscillators we do have four hour stokes headed upwards and onwards but losing a little momentum right over here so you know, as we approach resistance, uh, that's going to, you know, it's like what, you know, what, what is essentially telling us right now? Well, it is telling us exactly what we see in front of us. There is major resistance right here. Not only that, but also the four hour jewel could be setting up. Although I want to see that light blue turn over. If you have access to the jewel, wait for that next tick. We're going to be getting one in two hours and 27 minutes. If you start to see a curl over, that's going to be insight into whether this is going to be played or not. Um, but, you know, with the overall shape in mind, I mean, this is just a reaccumulation pattern after a nice big up. And uh, looking at the RSI, I mean, this is, you know, uh, this is a bullish consolidation. So overall, um, while I don't believe we tip, while, while typically we don't break ranges over the weekend, um, I would be cognizant that the weekend is will rapidly come into a close at uh, technically at 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight. We will get a new weekly, and that'll mean Asia's up and trading and going to be <laughs> going to be doing all sorts of crazy things. So uh, keep your eyes on out for that. Really, the big play for me is waiting for the CMEs to open because remember CMEs closed at 5,000 um, on uh, on Friday. At, uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time, and they'll open up tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday. And the real play for me is to see whether spot is trading above or below where CME is closed on Friday. So if spot is trading above like they are right now, or about 150 bucks above, then it's likely going to be a, a buyer. I, I'd likely be a buyer on gap filled around 5,000. By the same token, if we do sell off beforehand, uh, go back below 5,000, then I'll be a seller on the gap fill. Overall, though, you know this is just very low time frame thinking, and always I want to separate the very short, medium, uh, separate all the time frames. You know the short term time frame, the medium term time frame, the long term time frame, the macro time frame all the higher time frames and uh and this would be a more low time frame look and i do pause about my about my slurry speech right now i'm just i actually got little, very little sleep last night so thank you for bearing with me uh no pun intended on that one but uh but yeah going back on over to bitcoin right over here 
you know, the, the intermediate range is still quite clear. 377 exponential to the upside, 200 exponential to the downside. As long as we're kind of just playing around this range, that's all it is. I would be looking for a test down into this, uh, into the 200 exponential at some point in time, probably in this next week. But remember, that is more of a longer term look, I suppose you could say. Doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to come back down and test the 200 exponential, but it does mean that I'm interested in a trade. I do see a good setup for a more intermediate play right over there. Not because, you know, any trade is guaranteed 100% to work out, but it does offer up a very easy risk reward and, uh, and and trade management kind of scheme right over here so i really do like it actually a test back down to the blue box which would essentially be the 200 simple and 200 exponential on the daily um which you know likely to be tested over time and uh and of course if it you know if it, uh if we took out the bottom side of this around 50 4500 4550 i would get out of that position to just take the loss but for now uh i would be looking for a play anywhere in this area of course it's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor just sharing what i do and and uh and hopefully i want to be as open and as and as transparent as possible as i drag on over my own trading activities from my streamer account right over here i am still in the same position just holding this long from uh from 39 32 no real reason to get rid of it right now hedged some of it away, got rid of some of it as well, uh, as we kind of made this pattern more and more. And I'll get rid of more if we actually do take out this this, uh, this territory to the upside. As uh, I'm hedged at, in a way that uh, essentially I am not making or losing anything as long as we are below 50-50. When we get above 50-50, I don't make anything more, but I also don't lose anything more. So, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things where if we do take out this area, I will want to take advantage of that by uh, by putting on some more long deltas. And right now, you know, we're still kind of grinding out this area, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put on the position right now, especially on a weekend. But, uh, but hey, the trigger, the finger is on the trigger, um, so to speak. Uh, you know, if, uh, if we can actually clear this area um, sometime later today. Anyways, uh, while we are here, let's go on over and cover all the medium term time frames. So we got the four hour. I think we already spoke enough about this. Let's go over to the two hour. The two has actually been okay recently. Um, two hour actually did give it a sell on the jewel right over here. Uh, beautiful signal right over there. Not bad. And down. Let's go on over to the six hour now. What is the six hour saying? Six hour, six hour stokes are looking a little bit tired. Do you want to cross the upside? It looks like to me. Um, six hour RSI bullish consolidation. I would also say and uh, and hidden bullish divergence as well uh, on the. RSI between this point and this point as we make higher lows on price action and lower lows on the oscillator in an overall uptrend. Uh, six hour jewel, mm, this is not a setup. So that's going to tell me that the four hour and two hour knock, that, uh, those are not to be followed right now. Those are already played out uh, if they were to be taken, which I, I, like I said, I do not take signals on a weekend. Uh, eight hour right over here. Um, eight hour stokes uh, looking looking like they're tired as well looking like they do kind of want to cross up and look at this they're kind of getting down to, to, towards the lower end of the bullish control zone so you would imagine that the bulls well they want to maintain in control uh, we got eight hour eight hour rsi same sort of hidden uh, hidden bullish divergence as well um, being bought right back on up however it's not necessarily confirmed just yet we'd have to actually get above the high of this dildo right here so i could also make another call as well that uh, as soon as bitcoin even just prints above 5245 on bitmexico that's probably going to be the impetus for this area being taken out and uh and, and for that run towards uh what, what do we want to call it 5600 being uh, being initiated so right now um still still kind of in the making but uh don't get me wrong on the on the slightly higher time frames it does seem to me like bitcoin is getting a little bit more tired and uh and of course this is a little bit more of a longer term look than and i do imagine that if bitcoin were to get into this next territory that's going to likely produce a a nice counter trend trade most uh, uh, you know i'd imagine we do have 12 hour stokes up however and uh, defending the bullish control zone as bitcoin's being bought up just pretty aggressively actually up, uh, upon this trend line also following the 10 simple you can see just kind of walking them up uh you do see that the 12 hour rsi not really telling us too much just telling us that that it's basically a bullish consolidation i'm looking for a divergence here which we don't really have any just yet uh do we have anything to be aware of on the jewel not really i don't take these as signals i just look at i i just it, it kind of tells you that sometimes a setup might be coming but not the way that these are acting together right now or at least it wouldn't be for like another i don't know week um it'd be a while that's my point anyways with with looking at this formation right here and looking at the volume signature it does look to me like it wants to be respected um as an ascending triangle more importantly we do have a 12-hour total golden cross right over here which has been historically very powerful mr bitcoin in fact the last time that we even got a golden cross which is the green 55 and the purple 200 exponential moving averages right over here was all the way back in fuck's sake man uh oh did we just sell off a little bit oh 20 bucks down crazy uh was right over here in like 2016 i believe it was yeah somewhere here 
Yeah, there we go. Uh, September 2016. So that carried Bitcoin all the way from just under $600 to what is it? Uh, Twenty, almost $20,000 price for Bitcoin on uh, on Bitstamp. Uh, then we got Death Cross right over here, uh, February last year, and that took us all the way down to. Uh, about four thousand dollars to what to which we got uh, golden cross once again so you know to me does this have another leg in its uh you know in it uh, probably does um is starting to, is starting to look like that on the lower time frames uh this does not rule out the overall look towards a test on the 4600 level towards the 200 exponential and 200 simple uh however these will be rising as uh, we do see the 200 exponential start to make its way up towards 46 uh 46 30 ish area so that will be rising about 20 bucks uh, every day it looks like and uh and more importantly you know i would still be looking for that overall but doesn't mean that it has to happen you know the the timing of that does not need to happen it's just i know that i have a trade there's there's two major trade areas that i know about right now there was the one that we saw last night to take a short for a scalp and that was already had it already played out had a nice move from 50 to 45 to 49 not bad definitely not bad at all but more importantly uh, the other move is that if we actually take this area out, this 5250-ish area, then I look for a move towards 5600. By the same token, if we do take out 4800 to the downside, then I would be looking for a move into this blue box territory right over here, which is where my other, uh, which is my, where, uh, where my other play I'd like to get into uh, would come from. Until that happens, I'm just kind of sitting in my uh, in my spot positions under a bit and uh, not really doing too much other than that. I mean, maybe a little bit of scalping here and there, but really, but realistically, uh, not 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 uh, not anything worth writing home about. Going over here the daily however let's go check out what the daily also is looking like daily stokes are still down but they are kind of a week down and usually when you see the daily stokes heading down but price action kind of you know slowly walking its way up that's that's indicative of a bullish consolidation uh, we see the same thing on the daily r side it's going to be marching its way back up i want to see it put in some divergence if it is going to call a top we are at levels that we haven't seen since uh, december 2017 right over here um, but that's less important as the fact that uh, that Bitcoin broke up even above the bullish control zone. I mean, you can see that there was a nice horizontal kind of coming in right at the bullish control zone right over here at the 70 marker. And uh, and Bitcoin broke above it, just very erect above it, actually, in, in fact, very powerful. So uh, so overall, <clears throat> you know, it puts it on the radar. It makes it easier to make divergence. But I don't just, you know, just because it's that high doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, it's 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 fucking worthless, really. Uh, Daily Jewel, not going to be saying anything is not going to be saying anything either uh, typically speaking when we do get into this more crazy zone right here those have produced some nice sell-offs the last time was this action right here the time before that was this action right over here the time before that was this sell-off right over here so let's actually see if the uh, may maybe the daily jewel does get this one yeah I, uh, I, I I forgot that I forgot that it's actually in this zone right now yeah, the last few times that we've gotten into this zone have not been good. This this was a run at uh, ten thousand in May last year, dumped before dumping down to six thousand. This was a run in at eighty four hundred last year before dumping down to six thousand in August. Uh, this was the high at twenty thousand last year. I also do want to t check this out as well as we've been monitoring the higher time frames, the two day and the three day. Most importantly, uh, two day total time frame looking a little bit tired on the Stokes now. Getting more, uh, getting more into range, um, which this area kind of has called some major dumps in the past. Same sort of uh, 8,400 area right here in August, 10,000 area right here in uh, in May. If we go to the three day, I really want to see what's going on right now because we just closed another three day little time frame, and we actually closed above this 89 exponential right here, which to me tells me that we want to give another test towards a 200. It actually, uh, it actually doesn't. It says that it's quite powerful, and more importantly than that, looking at the three day soaks, which we've been watching for the past. Uh, Jesus Christ, man, how, how long have we been watching this for? Uh, about a month, month and a half. We did get another tick on this, and, and look at this. The next tick is actually taking us above and beyond this trend line, and this is a trend line that has been born all the way back from uh, December in 2017 when Bitcoin was around 20,000. So calling the 20,000 top right over here, then calling the 10,000 top in May last year, then calling the 8,400 top in, in August last year, all major dumps. Uh, now we are actually taking out this trend line for the first time in well over a year. Of course, this is not confirmed. We need to see this three-day total actually close above, but if this three-day total is anywhere above you know, 5150 essentially, uh, uh, that will be confirmed and that would tell me that we have something new going on as far as this is you know as far as that is concerned overall more importantly 
looking at the greater picture, I do want to get this on onwards and over here because I'm talking about a lot of bullish things right now, and uh, and I want to also fade myself back because realistically speaking, as a trader, there are a significant amount of resistances coming in right around this 52.50 a share, if you want to call it that. We have the blue 377 exponential on the daily, which is incredibly important to me for longer term trend identification. You can see that that's kind of caught the the upper wicks of our run so far. Uh, we go over here to the two day. We have a clear rejection of the 200 exponential, and we're still living below the 377 exponential as well. Both major resistances for well more more long term trend identification, especially since the two day just has a better read on uh, on Bitcoin in general, in my opinion. Uh, the three day also you know still has a 200 exponential right overhead, right around that 52.50 ish area. Actually, this one's a little bit higher, almost uh, wow, almost uh, 53. Yeah, we'll call it 53.50. Uh, we go over here to the weekly, same sort of thing. Weekly is going to be closing later today at, uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So it's going to have a chance to close very strong. But still, we are still respecting this cyan 89 exponential in this green 55 exponential right over here, which so far our resisting price albeit not by too much we are about $200 off the high so I would still call that uh, I, I would still call that uh, I, I, I would not call that a rejection if we ended like you know $300 $400 off the high that would be more of a rejection right now we're ending pretty damn close uh, but still more resistances in this area and of course when we go over here to the monthly the the king of the time frames for mr bitcoin right now is you know we can't really go to a quarterly or yearly just yet uh we have the yellow 21 exponential and the red tens of moon average and now we have a and, and basically we have these guys crossing and we're coming in and testing the cross which is very normal it's very natural it happens all the time especially on the first you know especially on the first go and it's very insightful to see what the reaction is upon this once we get this first test to know if the bots and the algos are going to be on the sell side or not, if they're not going to defend. And because this is the first test, usually these things sell off. Um, and, uh, and, and that's not a death sentence at all, but it's very, it's very natural that they're, that they're going to sell it on the first pass, but we are grinding this area. Keep in mind though, this is a monthly. So we are in the seventh day of April. It's very young in its month's life. Uh, got to wait, you know, really until the month closes for, for, for full on confirmation for something like this. But the fact is that all these higher time frames showing major, major resistances right around this, we'll, we'll call it 52 50 ish area. Although, you know, think of it as a zone as always. So, <clears throat> you know, here's the thing is what I want to be aware of is is the weekly right here because this is going to be the highest time frame closing the soonest right and if we can actually close it closer and closer to the 50 and 89 that's going to look better and better and light and open up the and open up the floodgates for that next break towards 56 57 ish area uh, by the same token depending upon how we close this guy later tonight at 8 p.m eastern time if it does close le uh, lower below that's going to be the first insight into whether the bots and algos are going to be on the sell side respecting a cross like this as well which is is, is quite a valid cross um the 50 exponential to the downside of the 89 exponential just essentially a lower period cross on the downside of a higher period telling you about the overall trend and this is you know, we just we just cross right over here. You get in test right over here. Very, 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 very common. Um, so, you know, exact exactly similar to monthly. And what's a little bit scarier about these time frames, the so weekly and the monthly, is that. And a little bit somber and perhaps as well is that we do not have an uptrend. Um, in fact, we're still quite a little bit far away from getting an uptrend on a monthly. Uh, monthly needs monthly technically needs to get back above. I mean, most people would call this seventy eight hundred. I would say six thousand though. I would probably would probably do it. But I do understand that you know the more classical people would be looking for seventy eight hundred. I don't think I, I don't think it'd be I I don't think I'd wait. I, I would not wait for that to be to be quite clear. The second that Bitcoin closes the monthly dildo above the twenty one exponential, I get long. Whoops. Oh, there it goes. Anyways, um, so yeah, when that, you know, keeping that in mind, I do want to go back to 2014, 2015, which perfectly shows the validity of the 21 exponential. You can see that Bitcoin broke it right over here for the first time in, and actually it's history in, uh, in September 2014. And then it spent the next, well, year or so trying to get back above, uh, giving it a try right over here, 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 and then finally right over here, breaking it onwards and up to, to the upside. But that means that it got rejected three times and being shuffed, shuffled right back down to its prior lows uh, a along the way, you know, each and every on, on each and every one of these those rejections. But once it regained it right over here, just closing one little dildo above on a good volume, then that was the start of your bull momentum taking you all the way from about three hundred dollars to twenty thousand dollars price per Bitcoin. Not bad. But remember, I am wanting to see what the response is on this cross and how we're going to respect it. And the highest time frame closing the soonest is the weekly. So I'm very interested to see where we actually close this one as it's going to have carry on and follow through on over to the higher time frames. Of course, it's still very fucking early, you know, to be looking at a monthly but uh, but I do want to get that on you know onwards and out and and outwards over there, um, just in case. 
Anyways, uh, while we're on here on the weekly, weekly stocks getting way up there, but that's okay. I mean, they can stay up here for quite some time. Uh, no problem with that. More importantly, if we do go on onwards and over to our RSI, there is going to be aware of right over here, which you can see that during the bull phase from 2015, or sorry, like end of 2015 to late 2017, early 2018, Bitcoin put in a nice horizontal on the RSI right here. Let me just get rid of this so there's no confusion. And well, we, we can actually talk about this guy a little bit more. But this horizontal right here, very important because this is actually what held up the bull momentum in, you know, in that in that three year bull run. And right now we're actually breaking back above that which is quite powerful. Uh, yet last week, the one of the big things that I was watching was this trend line down around here, which was the consolidation above 6,000 before Bitcoin broke 6,000 down to 3,000 over the like, you know, half a year. Sorry, Jesus Christ, man, having all sorts of uh, gastric issues today. <laughs> Going to destroy my toilet later too. Um, but more importantly, <laughs> not more importantly, but as of the same importance, as I don't want to offend my colon, uh, we actually just blasted right through this trend line right here, which was unexpected. Uh, typically speaking, when you come up and test it for the first time, it is a sell-off. So the fact is, is that we had a pretty damn strong reaction. And that tells me that overall this market is... Is it uh, is actually is actually stronger than I first considered, which is you know you know so, uh, uh, something that I have to be you know so, something that as soon as I see I have to be you know I have to be ready to change my beliefs about, and I believe that that is th this is this is your signal right here. Now at some point I would like to see this area retested uh, as support, and look at this is going to be coming in right at the edge of the bearish control zone as well. So it's good confluence with that area, and also saying that it's going to be a little bit harder to get the the weekly RSI back into the bearish control zone. But more importantly, or sorry, as of the same importance for the medium to higher time frame look as well, we will extremely likely be clo closing this uh, th this next weekly total. This this weekly total that we're looking at right here, right now at 8 p.m. Eastern time above the this purple 200 exponential moving average and also the yellow 21 exponential moving average, which are both very important to me as well for more longer term trend as uh, as well. I, sh I should say a degree less than the monthly and the weekly, obviously, but uh, but, you know, medium time frame, perhaps. Um, and overall, we had been living under this purple uh, 200 exponential moving average for the past five months. Uh, while we've all seen crazier things, um, I would say it's probably safe to assume that we probably do close above this guy. But if if Bitcoin were to sell back down below the 200 exponential by end of day, that would be a huge signal that we are getting ready for it, new lows. Um, however, I don't believe I, I think that that's pretty unlikely to happen right now. Then again, that's why I wait for confirmation. But uh, but basically. What I'm, what I'm looking at right over here is first things first, the 200 exponential has been holding up for the past five months. So breaking back above that is a change of behavior as far as this goes. And that does kind of govern the 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 forwards outlook um, for the next you know month, I'd say. Uh, we're also going to be closing above the 21 exponential, which we haven't gotten above since, I mean, shit. I mean, technically, uh, technically August last year. Or sorry, uh, yeah, August last year. But uh, really, I want to be, I, I'm concerned with the opens and closes above that, which we have not seen since, you know, more than a year ago. Uh, uh, more importantly, I would actually be love. I actually love to buy a retest of this 21 exponential, which I do believe is likely to happen. Uh, we're probably the next tick is probably going to bring it back up to about 44 something rather, um, and uh, and that's going to kind of be in confluence with the daily 200 uh, simple and 200 exponential right around that 4600 range. So it's going to create a nice buffer zone. And uh, and if we could get a test on that sometime, you know, early in this next week, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So right now, um, going to be going to be a little bit of a waiting game, but. But but there are multiple trade setups kind of staring us right in the face. And look at the volume on this weekly dildo, which is, again, closing later tonight. It's actually looking okay. It's actually looking decent. Um, I would expect that if we do close it anywhere, you know, anywhere above 5,100 uh, like this, that's going to be interpreted as bullish and likely to beget some uh, some some continuation. Uh, okay, we looked, we looked at all the oscillators. Weekly jewel, not anything really to look at here. Um, I mean, tenic, nah, it's 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 not even worth talking about right there. It's 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 there there there's there's no signal there. It gave a buy signal right here on on January on this low. There you go. That's that's a jewel for you. Gives you one signal every every few months on the weekly, but they're fucking good. Uh, okay, cool. So we talked about all of that, um, and also I do want to talk about this as well. So while we're on here on the daily, you know, I've spoken about all I've spoken about a lot of the bullish things in the in the shorter term time frames to the medium term time frames, which are starting to have more and more carryover as we close more of these higher level time frames above these critical areas. Of course, fifty two fifty still the area to watch, but the higher time frames I do want to make very very clear that as far as I'm concerned for the macro time frames, nothing has still changed. I need to see one us clearing um, above. Well, 
5250 is not necessarily going to do it. It's probably going to have carry on over into it, but really the monthly close and above 5200 would make me feel a lot more confident to see, you know, uh, you know, a lot more confident in, in an overall, you know, change in, 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 in macro behavior. So right now it's just, you know, it's more of a waiting game more importantly. Um, on top of that, um, on top of that, we do actually have several things coming around this area as we spoke about as well. So I just do want to show that there are a lot of there are a lot of dissenting opinions. Um, sorry, not a lot of dis dissenting opinions, but a lot of things that show that there are major major resistances in this area to chew through. So again, to just to just kind of recap, we've got the daily the daily three seven seven. We got the two day two hundred exponential and the three seven seven as well. Actually, uh, the three day two hundred exponential. We got the weekly fifty and eighty nine right over here. We got the monthly twenty one and ten. And then also when we look at our our oscillators technically speaking daily stokes are down daily rsi getting to levels that we haven't seen since since late 2017 right over here although again i'm looking for divergence as this was when your ultimate dooms drop was actually happening not this right over here and um and overall what, what was the other thing that i was looking at and over yeah and, and we could also talk about the fact that at some point this 200 exponential will be a like a magnet for price action more importantly if we or sorry not more importantly but just something that i'll just throw on top of there as like a cherry on top we can look at the titty sequential right now and the titty sequential showing that we actually printed a nine the other day uh three days ago so we're getting a about a three dildo correction right over here as we consolidate um this can this can very well lead into continuation i mean if, if bitcoin breaks 5250 this will be continuation this this will be consolidation right here and continuation so i just want to show that the t that the titty sequential is not fucking indestructible uh if we go over here to the three day we did print a nine right over here but this is the thing we just closed a three day dildo above the 89 exponential i kind of like that Kind of like that setup for another test at, the, at you know at the 200 at the very least. Uh, the weekly, the weekly is also going to be finishing on a nine. So, uh, so technically, you know, the weekly would. The, the weekly has been a decent marker in the past, to be fair. Uh, we did call a nine right over here, although Bitcoin topped out about a couple weeks afterwards. Um, we did call a nine right over here, but Bitcoin kind of bottomed a few weeks before. Not perfect, but getting it around there, telling you, you know, tell, uh, telling you it's, you know, it's, it's decent enough. Got a nine over here before this little correction. We go over to the three day. I think the three days actually had better, um, better, uh, be better work around. And there we go. Bitcoin selling off a little bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, nine, nine being called right over here nine at the almost at the top you know a couple more dildos above that i uh, got a nine bottom right over here almost on the bottom got a nine bottom over here almost on the bottom as well pretty damn close uh, but no cigar um, anyways, uh, let's see. Let's go down to the lower time frame, see what's going on now, because uh, we just did have a little bit of a move coming back down to test 21 exponential in the hourly. Uh, again, Bitcoin just, you know, as long as it's kind of chugging along this area, I don't really see any major glaring issues. Technically, yes, it is an ascending triangle with a measure move pointing towards a 5600 ish area. So keep that in mind. Um, this will be destroyed if, to the downside if we break 49, 49 and a quarter, we'll call it 49.29, or sorry, 49.25. Um, and at that point, I'd be looking for that move. You know, technically speaking, your next port's going to be. 4800 but but personally speaking i would be looking for that move into this blue box territory because this blue box territory there's just so many things pointing down towards it uh we are going to have a uh, four hour stokes looking a little bit tired right now so uh, you know uh, uh, does this area provide another you know another resistance or another rejection um it's looking like it especially with the weekend you know still in full swing i need to see i need to see cmes open to be a believer in any sort of a major break uh breakout or breakdown for that matter um anyways <clears throat> so 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 keep in mind yeah also that this has an apex uh, coming in actually technically you know in about a week uh sorry not a week but f but five days on april 12th uh, I, I don't think it's going to take all the way till april 12th to break i think it's going to break somewhere somewhere around here on the 9th or maybe 10th uh, so we can spend some more time within this area but keep in mind that you know, looking at, I just want to kind of flesh out that that 4600 level as I've been speaking a lot about it. But first things first, we got the daily 200 simple 200 exponential right over there, and it's also kind of a breakout out of this former area, which I'm going to imagine that is probably you know light. Mm, no, I, I wouldn't say that the volume profile is down there. It's certainly certainly much higher. Um, more importantly, if we go over here to the weekly, we can see that the weekly 21 exponential is going to be making its way up above there as well. And I do like, to, and I really do like to buy those retests of that after a long way of being away. Um, on top of that, uh, we can show this. We can show the Trollinger bands really quick, which the Trollinger bands are trending well outside of the upper band, which is indicative of a strong trend. Just like when we were on the downside right over here, we were kind of hanging out, on, you know, upon, you know, uh, you know, below the lower band for quite some time and using the lower band as uh, as as resistance. Well, I want to see us close above this upper Trollinger band and then use them and then use that upper Trollinger band as support, which is coming in where? 
4,600. So again, uh, I would like to see, you know, if we are going to get a trending move, I would, it would actually be a lot more healthy to come back down retest that area and then bounce off from it. Um, so at the very least, I'd be looking for a nice bounce in that area. Uh, also, you know, while we're here on the, on, you know, on the weekly Trollinger, why not talk about the fact that we opened and closed our first weekly dildo above the median Trollinger band for the first time last week. We spoke about this last week, but of course it was, con you know, it was confirmed since then. And now we're just kind of getting follow through. So just going through all the different, you know, all the different motions we, we'd been following this for the last uh, month um, as Bitcoin kind of flirted around this median Trollinger band. We actually got our first open and close above there since uh, 20, early 2018, we could say. And uh, that usually does lead into continuation onwards and upwards, actually. Um, on top of that, let's get this, let's get that guy off and get these guys back on. There we go. And I think that's... Is that everything that I want to say from that time frame perspective? Um, I think so. If we go back to BitMexico, yeah, you can't, you know, if, if, if you want to get super slick with it right now, super slick, uh, what you could do is basically trade this horizontal right here. I don't, I, I probably wouldn't be doing this myself, but 50-50, uh, but but uh, very immediate, uh, intermediate support, 51-50, uh, very intermediate, uh, sorry, very, very immediate uh, resistance. You know, if if fifty one fifty breaks the upside, I'd be looking for a trade to fifty two fifty. If uh, fifty fifty breaks to the downside, I'd be looking for a trade towards uh, forty nine. Um, if forty nine breaks, then I'm, then I'd be looking for a trade towards forty eight. Yeah, you get it. Again, not something that I care to do on a weekend, but it will be available probably later tonight, um, as we are respecting this pretty damn well uh, before the weekly is revealed, which should set the path on whether we want to see continuation first upwards and out and outwards over here, or if we want to come back down and uh, and test this area. Um, so yeah. Anyways. Um, okay, we talked all about that. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. She's been pretty powerful recently. In fact, she's been incredible. Uh, just very, 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 very strong and independent woman, which I am so proud of her. I'm so supportive. She should deserve Woman of the Year. Way better than fucking Caitlyn Jenner, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> no, you can't say that. That's illegal. Uh, but basically, above all major movement averages on the weekly, I, on increasing volume, I like it. I like it. Now I would be looking for a pullback at some point in time. Uh, if it comes anywhere near mid to low 70s, that's kind of that's kind of the area that I'd be looking for. But uh, very, 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 very powerful move. I mean, this is, you know, we've been saying this for about a month, month and a half now. Or sorry, we've been saying this ever since here in February that uh, Litecoin is 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 the market's best. Is, is, is the market's best argument for the bear market being over. And Mrs. Litecoin just taking it onwards and upwards, putting the market in a backpack and uh, carrying it quite far. Um, this is exactly what I look at, or sorry, exactly what I look for, for uh, you know, on a major mark cycle low. Uh, putting it in the lows right over here at about $22, called perfectly by Charlie Lee. And on increasing volume, we've kind of dug ourselves out of this area uh, all the way over here. This, this is perfect, perfect, perfect. Not only that, but we've been following this for a while. The Golden Cross on the daily. Mrs. Litecoin gets a Golden Cross right over here here about a couple weeks ago and then onwards and upwards ever since this is why i have the rule whenever you have a golden cross on the daily and you're above the 21 exponential the yellow moving average right here i mean i ain't bearish and more importantly i'm long so a lot of people are looking at the bearish divergences you know stokes coming down all sort you know whatever elliott waves telling you that this thing's coming back down but ultimately speaking uh, that's why i use that's why i put exponentials first and foremost because uh, they will get these trending moves and on increasing volume this is extremely powerful uh if we go down to the lower time frames i do believe that mrs Litecoin is making some sort of a uh, yeah she, it looks like she is making some sort of you know ascending triangle as well uh maybe a little bit less of one if you if you want to get like super specific with it you could call this maybe a rising wedge i don't care what you call it the measure move is going to be about the same anyways uh if we do break it onwards and outwards to the upside i think it i think it directly points to our to my next target of like a buck 10 uh let's confirm this yeah yeah right over here this horizontal right around a buck oh nine buck ten ish area on finex by the way uh keep in mind that uh exchange does matter because finex does trade a little bit of a premium but it does have the most price action history so i put the most weight on it or sorry you know it's i don't put the most weight on it but i you know i look at it from a historical stance um so yeah <clears throat> anyways uh going back down to the 12 hour what's 12 hour looking like 12 hour stokes back up looking like they're consolidating as well it, it, it this one kind of looks like it wants to take a leg up uh support right around 89 dollars if it does pop back down around there uh, i look for that to bounce off of that area uh, going back down to lower time frames yeah it looks pretty orderly in this consolidation i you know i do think that uh this one's probably going to give it a try probably going to give it a try uh, in fact on the hourly uh, on the hourly it looks a lot more like a uh, like an ascending triangle 
Um, anyways, uh, go back to the daily. What do, do I have anything to say about the daily on this one? Daily Stokes up, daily RSI. Daily RSI is not even going to create divergence right here. Jesus Christ, man. Come on, bring it up. There we go. Yeah, it's, we're not going to have any divergence right here. We need to make some higher highs first, and uh, RSI is just keeping keep keep and climbing its way up. Uh, very powerful. Very fucking powerful. The daily jewel is going to be lining up, but I, this is not a signal to take. You're going to see the blue overshoot, most likely. Uh, when you see them approach, if, if you have access to the jewel, when you see them approach this fast, I, I don't take those. Uh, and, I, and I've been saying this for a while. Uh, but be careful with that. Take that one at, you know, at your own peril. I, I would not take it. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, th this looks constructive to me. Um, okay, cool. So we talked about that. Let's go talk about Mr. Buterol really quick. What's Mr. Buterol doing? A 168. Uh, actually, Actually closing yesterday as a doji, long-legged doji dildo, but on the lower time frames, you can see that we're kind of being walked up. Same sort of ascending triangle that we see on all the other majors, uh, but one degree less as Mr. Buterol, kind of the laggard, kind of the weakling of the market. Um, sorry, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Vitalik, uh, but you know, mesh move on this baby would be pointing us towards my next target, I believe, or is. Is it my next target? Uh, higher than my next target. Well, we can make a zone on this one. Yeah, it would, it would actually make more sense. Get this low right over there, and that actually gets it perfectly. We can make a zone between uh, 185 and 190 on uh, on Finex as well. Um, and this and, and this one kind of does look like it's working its way. You can actually see, if you're looking at this whole consolidation right here as one, then we did have technically a breakout, uh, or, or sorry, we're working on a breakout right now. Uh, right above this level, but I'm not seeing breakout volume, so I'd be less, you know, I'm less convinced of this one. It's, 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 it's very concerning to not see Mr. Buterol join with the rest of the market. It's not a good thing. So I do want to be very, um, Jesus Christ, what's going on over here? You motherfucker. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, back now over here. Um, you know, it's it uh, it certainly is a little bit concerning, but with the rest of the market kind of you know hinting at hinting at a little bit more up, wanting to kind of work its way up, uh, I would you know Mr. Buterell is going to join as well, just not as strong, not, you know. So the gains are are probably in the other ones right now. Uh, let's see, daily RSI going to be creating a little bit of divergence, most likely by later tonight, um, but. Still need to confirm a local high, which we do not. Th this is a long like a doji dildo, but I need to see I need to see uh, continuation off of it first uh, to the downside. If we're going to call that a local high, which we don't have right now, uh, let's look at the weekly really quick. Or sorry, uh, daily while we're here. Uh, daily stokes are up, so looking nice. Uh, daily jewel looks healthy, looks fine. Uh, weekly, yeah. So this is really where I really where I kind of nail it down for the for the weekly. Um, I wouldn't be making decisions based off the daily right now for for Mr. Buterol. It's it's the weekly is where it's at. If it could close above this yellow twenty one exponential, that'll be the first time it's done that since since this bull trap right over here. It sounds bad when you say it like that, but you know what I mean. Um, if 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 Mr. Buterol can close above there, I'd be looking to buy any sort of a pullback around there towards one sixty ish area, uh, and I'd be looking for continuation probably towards you know above two hundred actually. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes on that as, uh, as, as that's going to be, you know, we're, we're going to get confirmation on this later tonight at 8 PM Eastern time. So if we close above one, one fifty nine and a half, I'd be a buyer in any sort of test back down into the low one sixties. If we close below one, one fifty nine and a half, then actually I would probably be looking for some, uh, I'd probably be looking for some sales as this is probably going to return back to the low side of the range. But right now, uh, hinting a little bit more at the upside. Let's see what's going on over here. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on over what's going on over here man <clears throat> okay let's uh let's get back on it let's let's focus on shit that actually matters baby uh okay cool so we spoke about all of that now because it is a sunday i do want to talk about some more long-term ideas for mr bitcoin but before getting into that let's uh let's look at the bitcoin longs and shorts we have a little over twenty-four thousand open longs, so we have seen longs let go over their positions and we have seen shorts increase as well 21 and a quarter shorts uh open right now uh shorts paying absolutely nothing uh daily interest the longs paying about 5x but uh both those pretty low in 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 all actuality head shorts are two are a little bit under three thousand so we really have about eighteen and a half thousand open naked um, so a little bit of an imbalance, but more importantly, the shorts are once again getting a little bit uh, a little bit spicy. They're they're getting a little bit more interested. You can see that uh, even during the major pump of one thousand dollars about a week ago. Uh, we actually saw shorts increase. We haven't really seen shorts get liquidated on Finex uh, since then. Shorts are sh shorts are actually gaining interest out of this area, which let me remind you, the same area is actually where uh, most of the major dumps from the past year have emerged from. Every single time we have gone in this area, it hasn't been a major dump except for the last time, which tells me that this is actually a change of behavior. So it's probably not, pro I, I probably wouldn't be respecting it too much any longer. Um, 
or or perhaps it's it's time to consider that it's you know it's 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 telling us that the overall market cycle we're seeing we're seeing slight change in behavior in the underlying market dynamics which is important and does ha does lead on it does have carry on over into uh, into actual price action which does matter which you know matters more because that's the one that your pnl is based off of uh or at least perhaps it matters more to you i'd imagine um anyways uh, back on bitcoin and i do want to talk now about some more long-term ideas as first i will talk about the First, I'll talk about the bull case. No, first, I'll talk about the bear case, actually. First, talk about the bear case. So, again, we are at all sorts of major, major resistances. We got the daily, the two-day, the three-day, the weekly, and the monthly. We got the titty sequential all coming around this range, calling tops, saying, be careful. This is the area that traps do emerge from. Now, when I say that, does that mean that Bitcoin can't get another leg up on the higher macro timeframes before, before tumbling? No, not at all. In fact, that would be kind of baked in now, wouldn't it? If Bitcoin got up to about that 56, 5700-ish number, that would make a lot of sense, actually, because then we'd actually have some time to put in some divergence on the higher time frames and then you get everyone just just one more degree of FOMO to up and uh and then it's time to you know and then it's time to distribute but uh but hey that's an opinion let's i always want to separate opinion from technical analysis and of course on the monthly we still buy you know as we said before have no no higher lows no higher highs to get a to get a higher low we we'll, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to actually come back somewhere down around here and set a higher low at some point in time but you know given this monthly right now i don't think that's happening i don't think that's happening anytime soon in fact more importantly this is a good time to state that uh this this phase of the market cycle can take a very long time a very fucking long time a very 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 long time um so keep that in mind keep that in mind so, you know if, if if you think that this is over because we've had four months in this more aggressive area i would be careful with that i would be very careful with that i wouldn't be willing to call that over for, like for good with no questions asked until bitcoin makes a higher high on the monthly which would have to get above this 7800 level right over here so it needs to set a higher a higher low and then a higher high for an uptrend on the monthly that would be where the you know that would be where dreams are met like i said though i will actually be making decisions before that if bitcoin closes above the 21 exponential i will i will put on you know actual long positions um but you know, am I, I'm I'm certainly bullish on that time frame. If that were to happen, does that mean that I get bullish overall? It means probably, yeah. <laughs> probably the answer is probably yeah. Uh, of course, of course, we get back above six thousand as well. I think that that would be pretty damn hard to contest with. Uh, but the super traditional people will say, hey, you got to get above 70, 78 to seventy nine hundred to set a higher high and then set a higher low and then uh, and then you have an uptrend on the monthly. Very simple stuff. But you can see that we're very far away from doing that. So a sombering reality that uh, one you know a, a one week of price action does not change over a year's worth of work done. Uh, very important. Uh, going over here to the weekly, um, weekly, you know, just all, just, just at all made, you know, all, you know, all sorts of, uh, all sorts of resistances. Um, other than that, not, not too much to state. In fact, the bear case does diminish a little bit more and more the longer that Bitcoin stays above 5,000, actually. Uh, in fact, what I do believe that we're doing right now is uh, because Bitcoin zoomed through this 5,000 area on the way up and, well, on the way down, we're coming back right in the, right in this, right in the middle of this kind of uh, low value node area on Bitcoin and figuring out where the demand does indeed lie. We need to figure out where the liquidity is as, I like to make the analogy of like building a building, which is redundant as fuck, but it's also important because when I'm thinking about this, uh, you want to have like a strong structural integrity to, you want to, you want to have a strong structural integrity to build a high building, AKA price action going higher. And as you can see, when we zoomed through here on the way up and on the way down, nothing was built in this area. So now we're kind of coming back in this area and we're probably going to spend some time. We're probably going to really realistically spend some time between, you know, low 6,000 and uh, in middle 4,000 right over here as we kind of fill out this area. How long could this take? Probably months. This is why I say, hey, you know, keep in mind that um, this phase of the market can take a very long time. It can take a very fucking long time. So that's what I mean by that. And, and that's what a long time means to me as like a short term kind of a day trader for the most part. Um, so, yes. Anyways, uh, what else do we have to talk about on the bearish case? It is getting a little bit, you know, a little bit weakened, I would say. But uh, but hey, the longs and the shorts, we still have an imbalance in favor of the longs. And uh, and realistically, I want to see that. Uh, I want to see that the opposite. I want to see sh I want to see shorts. Uh, I, you know, I want to see shorts higher, th higher than the longs. Um, preferably around like 60 to 40 percent would look good 
get, uh, uh, gives you enough overhead liquidity to actually bust through a major resistance, which we will have around that 6,000 level. I mean, that was a level that was defended for what, for, for about a year right over here. I mean, remember how long that it took to actually break 6,000. Well, that's going to be equal, you know, equally strong resistance on the way up. So keep that in mind. Also on top of that, I do want to go back on over and check out, uh, what was the other thing that I want to check out? Um, yeah, we can, we can always look at this. We can always look at the MVT signal. The MVT signal is going to be signaling a sell a sell right now as well. So the MVT signal has called all major tops in Bitcoin, all major tops and bottoms in Bitcoin's history perfectly. Again, it signals red down here when we're at a topping area. It signals green when we're at a bottoming area. Of course, this is a more fundamental indicator to explain it. It is the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated using a forward, uh, a forward uh, 90 day smooth movement average, I believe it was, or sorry, backward 90 day smooth, smooth, movement, smooth move average. Anyways, uh, the more important part about this is that it has, it has had a perfect track record and is once again actually signaling a red right here, right now, as we approach all these major resistances, as we approach the daily 377, the two day 200, the three day 200, the, the weekly 50 and 89, the monthly 21 and 10, all very important for longer term trend identification as we also print a titty nine on, on, on the weekly. And you do see that the MVT signal is once again giving a sell in the same area that has produced some of the most major drops in Bitcoin's history. Now, here's the thing. Does that mean that Bitcoin's going to make a lower low from this area? Well, no, actually. Um, that That is not what it suggests. It just suggests that we could put in a major high. Uh, breaking, the, breaking our current low, I would not... I, I do not believe that, that is appropriate to talk about from a trading perspective until we actually break the, the weekly 200 cent moon average right here, which is this pink moon average at about 3,500 and will be rising over time. So as long as Bitcoin's above there, I don't believe it's appropriate to be looking for those major downside trades, talking about targets uh, into the mid to low 2000s or God forbid, you know, 1000, uh, as I know a lot of people are looking for as well. Um, as long as we're above this area from a trading perspective, and this, this channel is focused towards trading, it's not, you know, it's it's not really relevant. We can talk about it from mental masturbation perspective, but you know, I, I think that that's, I, you know, the more and more that I kind of reach out, or the the more and more that people reach out to me, the more and more I realize that that's just, it's it's a, it's a confusing and convoluted fact. So maybe I would, maybe I'll just stop talking about it in that way because um, I don't want to make, you know, I, I would never take a trade like that until we actually break this area. I mean, that's just it's that's just very simple trading <laughs> just very fucking simple trading um which maybe sometimes i take liberties uh with with not explaining because well it's a fucking two and it's a moved average on the goddamn weekly man um you got to break that before we talk about any sort of major downside targets uh making new lower lows anyways back onto the daily and talking back about the met signal so you know kind of you know gauging up the case for the bears uh Here's the thing with the MVT signal. We can stay in this red zone for a little bit of time. You can see that this last time we spent, you know, about six, uh, five, six months in this area. This time right over here, spent about a month in this area. Time before that, spent about, you know, a couple months in this area, about a month in this area, a few weeks in this area. So it can it can spend some more time in this area is my point. And uh, and that, you know, that could certainly allow for another higher high to that 40, uh, sorry, 56, 57 ish uh, level. Um, but overall, you know, we have the MVT signal signaling a high has never been wrong in the history of Bitcoin. We have the daily. We, we went through all the exponentials. We talked about the titty sequences as well. And that's really the big things for the bears. Obviously, the underlying market dynamics uh, it's kind of a little bit more on the bear side as well with the with the with the long still still, uh, you know, outpacing the shorts really want to see it the other way around. And over here, if we bring up the crypto fear, fear and greed index, we're not only just at the best number possible a 69. We are greedy AF. Uh, I mean, it's not greedy AF. We can get certainly higher than this. Uh, more importantly, though, this has also called some pretty damn good highs, although albeit not recently not recently so do we have a change of behavior on this indicator as well on this oscillator which each and every time that we've gotten above 50, the 50 marker where my curse cur currently is right now those have held all the major tops for the past year well we have been maintained above that area for a long time now uh <clears throat> so it's worth considering that uh you know this is another kind of fundamental indicator saying not a fundamental indicator but just an underlying mark dynamic indicator suggesting that uh tides perhaps turning um but uh, but hey, still historically speaking, anytime we've gotten above, I mean, not just a fifty, but the more higher you get, the more higher, the more high you get. Good fucking English ground. Um, the more and more likely it is to you know give way. Uh, historically speaking, no matter what you know, uh, no matter if it's a bull market cycle or a bear market cycle, the the aggregate number is lower usually when um you know uh when you're in a bear market cycle so that is kind of telling us that the overall ch you know trends are starting to shift we're seeing we're seeing you know something in, we're, we're seeing we're seeing evidence to that to, uh, to that fact 
Um, so yeah, you know, I, I guess to wrap up that thought in just one sentence, the bear market is certainly a lot closer to being over than it, the, uh, than it is not. So if you are a longer term type person, I hope I've been so damn clear with stating this for the last for the last five months. If you're a longer term type person, all you've had to do is play the 200 exponential to the upside and 200 simple to the downside in this area right over here. We broke the 200 exponential to the upside. That's going to, you know, that's going to likely have carry on over. Uh, again, assuming that we close the weekly above this 200 exponential, which I think is pretty fucking likely. It's at 4,100 right now, just for reference. Um, and by the same token, if you're a longer-term investor, a longer-term player, I'd imagine that the 200 simple down around here on the weekly, that's going to be what I'd be managing my shit off of, uh, as as well. If we break that, that's where I become very, 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 very bearish once again, looking for targets down into mid into the mid to low 2000s. Uh, real, realistically, I'd be looking towards first this next target between 2300 and 2600, where the 886 Fibonacci retracement is, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 20. 14, 2015, right over here. We have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in all the way from June and July of 2017. Very important. If you put on the volume profile, you'll notice that we have some pretty nice high, thick AF volume nodes coming around this area. And you'll notice that we have another gap right over here, similar to what we saw at 6,000. Very concerning. And on top of that, if we go over here to the BLX index and go to the monthly, and we can see that... Uh, <clears throat> It's not appropriate right now, but if we did break the, if we did break the 200 simple, then this next major support would be right around here, around 2600. More importantly, to kind of wrap up what we saw over the last couple of months, and we've been talking about this for a long time, that on the monthly dodo timescale, it was it was very it was very important to watch the closure of last month above or below this 50 exponential moving average, which was right here at about 3900. We obviously closed above. My the the soundbite that I was saying was, hey, if we close this 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 monthly dodo below the 50 exponential, I do get more bearish. I do, and I would start to, and I would start to really look for this trade down to 2,500 more. You know, I'd scale in maybe a little bit, and then add on a full position if we broke the 200 simple on the weekly. Well, that did not happen. We closed above, and of course, well, there's there's a path for that one as well, and that led us all the way on. Uh, you know, I was saying if we closed above the 50 exponential, we probably we probably work our way into the into the mid to high 4,000s. That actually got overshot in a little bit uh, into the 5,000s, obviously, um, and, uh, and that's where we are right now. So again, this is kind of the longer term look on this so keep that in mind let's go back now to bitcoin and now let's talk about the bullish case or what could be the bullish case and i'll start it off by this i'll, I'll start off by by looking at this indicator right over here which is it's not an indicator it's actually a chart but it is the it is the dollar value of mined coins for bitcoin and this has actually been perfect in the history of bitcoin and i'm going to put on i'm going to overlay a bitcoin chart Bitcoin USD, there we go. And let's do this, put it on log scale. And okay, so now I'm gonna go through and put in, and you'll notice that each and every time that the mined revenue of the, of, of sorry, the miners revenue, sorry, how do I wanna explain this? The, the, the dollar mined value of Bitcoin has a parabolic rise. It puts in a support trend line at that parabolic top, and then that never gets violated. And that actually corresponds to a low on the Bitcoin chart right over here. So first one's right over here. Uh, we break this. In fact, actually, sorry, we need to get the we need to get BLX on this to to, to do this right. Uh, let's see. There we go. <clears throat> Alrighty, cool. And let's now get this guy on log scale. There we go. Okay, so this first one being put in right over here, boom, creates support trend line that becomes the lows of your next market cycle right over here. Then we do. Oh, I get. Oh, it it actually say it's it saved my drawings. It saved my drawings this time. This is amazing. Then it creates another uh, another another parabolic move right over here, creates a, which puts in another trend line, and that becomes the bottom of the next cycle right over here. Boom. And then we put in another uh, you know another horizontal for this parabolic rise right over here. That gets tested in 2014, 2015. That becomes the lowest right over here. Beautifully. And yes, we grind it a few times, but we never go lower, bro. And then it works its way all the way up to 20,000. Uh, at the at that point, we put in another sorry, we put another horizontal for this parabolic run right over here. And guess what? We've actually tested that right here. So that actually suggests that the lows are in as well. Now, remember, uh, in twenty, just like in 2014, 2015, you can come back and revisit those lows, which could be confluent with what the MVT signal is kind of suggesting right now. Um, but overall, the low was in. So that has actually been perfect as well. In and it's a direct correlate. It's it's direct con contradictory to the MVT signal. But the MVT signal does not suggest that a new low needs to put in. It just suggests 
that we're putting in a major top, which could just return us to our lows at around 3,500, not necessarily make new lows. So this would be actually more powerful as far as that goes. <clears throat> now, do you know, uh, it, you know, am I basically saying that the lows are in right now? I don't think I'm, I, I'm still not ready to say that. Uh, I need, I'm still sticking with the monthly to kind of see where that, where that leads. And uh, right now with all the resistances in this area, uh, you know, on the first test, I don't think it's, you know, I, I don't think that we're going to take it out to be quite honest. Um, anyways, let me get rid of this. And, uh, and yes, I did want to show that. Um, what else do we want to show? Um, yeah, I guess I guess we could go back on over here to uh, to Bitstamp. Of course, I, I just kind of glossed through this on the first, uh, you know, on our first look. But bringing up the RSI, we're getting back into the RSI zone that actually held us up throughout the whole bull run of uh, of 2018, or sorry, of of 20 uh, the the three year bull run uh, culminating at at 20,000 price per Bitcoin. Uh, you will notice that we kind of snaked around this area last time um in 2014 2015 on the rsi but overall the fact is that it is above there right now so i would be running with that assumption that it is good until until proven not um so i would like to see this retested at some point and i also like to see this area retested as well actually um however jesus christ man here comes the dogs there they go but uh but but overall this would suggest that we are you know working our way out of this area more importantly um, okay. All right. Let's see. What else do I want to talk about? Did I, have, have I speak, have I spoken enough? Have I talked your ear off enough or, uh, or enough yet? We, t we spoke about, we spoke about CMEs. They closed at 5,000. So keep that in mind. Uh, CME major resistance, 5250 keep, you know, so that is the area to watch as far as I'm concerned. I don't think that we break it before CME is open, uh, if we are going to break it. Um, and, uh, and still that's, that's not really the trade that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the retest a little bit lower, uh, looking at, um, do we want to look at Riot Chain? Yeah, we can look at Riot again. It's kind of like a GBDC, but trades in tr but trades in traditional markets on like an actual exchange, not OTC bullshit. Um, this one right at a major resistance as well. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be trading over the weekend, um, but this chart has followed spot you know spot prices for the past uh, couple of years, ever since 2016. Um, so you know the what's what's really going on here is that traditional investors who don't want to you know make a make an account on BitMexico, they will play it through a subsidiary like this, another vehicle, which is a very valid way of doing it, and uh, and that's why I sometimes pay attention to it. And we basically hit a major exponential right over here in confluence with all the spot charts. So I like it when we're seeing the same thing across the board. That's going to be very indicative. Of of, of you know the market agreeing with each other and uh, and just kind of add validity to these major resistance areas which you know on first pass was was a very obvious sell um, now if we reapproach this area not so much it does change it around but we again have to wait until Monday uh, for regular marks to open for what for us to get more more uh, conclusion on that Anyways, I think we spoke all about what I want to speak about right over there. So let me put this down over here. We spoke about Mr. Buterol. We spoke about Mrs. Litecoin. Oh, let's also okay. Also, to the to the uh, to the degree, or sorry, to the case that the that the uh, that the lows are in, perhaps I do want to bring this up as well. Mrs. Litecoin actually has a history of doing this. So not only is it kind of like fundamentally. Um, fundamentally uh what's it called um accounted for with the halving effect but mrs litecoin has had a history of actually bottoming out at the same time as bitcoin but turning around the mark cycle before you see this right over here mrs litecoin bottoms in january 2015 uh, for the past market cycle bitcoin bottomed january 2015 now going back to mrs litecoin for a second you'll notice that mrs litecoin turns around and i'd say that she really enters into she really breaks a trend and shows that she's power she's a powerful woman right over here in about june 2015 june 2015 remember that remember that uh, that uh, that month june 2015 we'll go over to mr bitcoin and see when mr bitcoin turned around which i would argue was right here that was october 2015 so between june and october mrs litecoin was working her way onwards and upwards while bitcoin was still going sideways for a while, but Bitcoin had put in the lows. They put in the lows at the same time. Mrs. Litecoin was the one who was working higher first. Why is that? Maybe it's fundamentally driven for, uh, you know, f due to the block having. Maybe, you know, maybe it's just easy to create FOMO and something like this because it has less trading volume. Maybe it's maybe it's co maybe it's a combination of those two facts. But overall, we just, we see the same sort of behavior: increasing volume, increasing volume, increasing volume as. Price action goes onwards and upwards. Same thing right over here. A very steady increase in volume as all, all green. Very good. I, I mean, I like what I see here from Mrs. Litecoin. Like I said, I would be looking for a pullback, uh, but I'd be looking to buy the pullback. More importantly, I'd be looking to buy the pullback. Uh, again, not financial advice, not financial advice, just sharing, you know, what I'm doing in the exact sort of same situations. Um, so, yeah, that would also be kind of another thing, historically speaking, uh, that would be more on the side of, uh, of the lows being in. I mean, shit, man, just looking at Mrs. Litecoin, this is... 
significantly more convincing um, than Bitcoin, significantly more. Uh, it would be so much more easier if Bitcoin looked like this right now. Uh, you know, this, Litecoin looks a lot like SPY, like traditional markets, which had a tr which had a beautiful V bottom out of here and then up. Well, everyone's trying to short the thing all the way up, man. You know, we knew, and, and going back to the traditional marks just for a second here, we knew that as soon as we closed this monthly uh, above the 21 exponential right here, that was the moment. No more shorts. This is actually the time to be long. And look at this. You know that uh, that would have saved you all of the pain of, of of all the retailers trying to short this whole fucking thing all the way up. You could have got long at 260, rode this to 290. Not bad. Um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, back on a Bitcoin. I'll start to wrap this bitch up because uh, I think this video has probably been long enough already. Do you pause about that? I want to be respectful of your time, and uh, and also remind you that actually you just uploaded a new video for the MetaTrader Five, which is uh, which is the terminal that I've been using to trade forex recently. You can also trade uh, Magic and Net, uh, Magic and Net money there as well, and also indices and uh, commodities as well. Uh, they have they have quite a wide array, wide array, wide a range, array. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know what that word is. They have a lot of different things that you can trade there. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and if you want to check that out, it's in the description or I uploaded that video yesterday uh, and, I've, and I have a link to that exchange somewhere in the description of this video uh, around the derivative link as well. Anyways, to wrap this bitch up on the lower time frames, of course, uh, <sighs> blue box territory right over here still resisting we got the sell last night that we were looking for at 52.50 do if we reapproach 52.50 i actually don't think that it's going to be a sell if if it does reapproach 52.50 i think that it probably breaks um but technically speaking you have resistance there until you do not and uh and more importantly there's a trade to be made either which way so if i were to short 52.50 it's a very you know don't have to risk all that much to figure out if i'm gonna be wrong maybe have a stop butts at 5300 and uh, and then flip long if, if bitcoin actually takes out 5300 or, or confirms above 52.50 more importantly and look for a play towards 56 uh you know you know a nice risk reward there as well by the same token you know if you do take a short right right over here uh i guess i'd be looking for another move back down to about 50 50 maybe even test the rising support trend line right over here at 49 it's gonna be coming in around 49.50 as well um, if that area breaks, then I'd be looking for it uh, for a trade down to 4,800. If that area, tra if that area breaks, which I don't think happens until we actually get the new weekly, I'd be looking for a trade down around here, around the 4,600 level, in confluence with the weekly and the daily major exponential movement averages. So to me, those are where the nicer trades do kind of emerge from. And uh, and right now with Bitcoin, you know, on a weekend shuffling its way through this area, I'm in no real rush to get into position. Uh, I would, you know, I I'd love to buy a breakout over here. Well. Love to buy a breakout. I'd, I'd buy a breakout right over here. I'd buy this area right over here. Manage risk very easily at 4,500 ish, 4,550. Manage risk right over here, you know, 40, uh, 52, whatever it might be. Um, but until that happens, we're just, you know, again, just a game of supporting resistance as we spoke about yesterday. You know, if, if, if you got that trade from 5,250 and, and, and bought support, fucking beautifully done, especially on a weekend. Beautifully, beautifully, be beautifully executed. Um, anyways, that's going to do it for me uh, right here, right now. I'm going to be back on tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow with some more uh, video and live stream action hopefully with some more sleep as well as i'm pretty as, as i'm sure that you can you can tell that my tongue is uh it's a little bit tied right now but that's okay as I'm about to go eat a shit ton of food man i'm really hungry <laughs> anyways uh take care i'll see you soon and uh as always want to be wishing you the best the best wishing you well man that's what we say anyways take care